So good evening, everyone. I uh, want to welcome you into our Wednesday night Bible class. Uh, and, and this Wednesday night Bible class, this day in particular, uh, is a great day uh, to be welcoming you in. Uh, I'm sure uh, everyone, I pray everyone had a, uh, a wonderful day, a uh, blessed day. They should have been blessed. This day sh uh, should be special, blessed, uh, so many things to so many of us. Uh, and so uh, as we come on for our uh, Wednesday Bible study, we should come on in, 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 in gratitude and uh, in jubilance and just uh, so appreciative, so grateful uh, for this day. A amen. Because uh, at one point uh, was kind of looking like it was going to be hard to get to this day. But, but by the grace of God, and uh, it just shows us that God is good. Uh, he's faithful. Uh, uh, he keeps his promises. Uh, all he asks of us uh, is just to keep ours, just to do what he's asked us to do. And, and, and things can be so much easier on us uh, if we would just adhere uh, and submit to his word and his will. And so, but, but we come on today uh, so, so, so uh, joyful, uh, so thankful. So many people uh, just, just you look through uh, the book face land and you, you see so many. Uh, wife had a procedure done today and you look through the uh, the book face land, you know, she's wearing her, her pearls and chucks and everybody is, is wearing chucks and pearls. And it's, it was just such a, a wonderful day, a, a day of inspiration on so many fronts. Uh, and so it's just, I just feel good today. Uh, I'm just, I'm grateful. I'm thankful as I'm sure many of you are. Uh, but you know, also when there uh, is a great, a uh, sense of, of, of joy and jubilance uh, on, on, on one end of the spectrum. On the other end of the spectrum uh, is the total opposite. Uh, it's, it's where we are joyful. Uh, so many others are angry and, and, and upset and, and mad. And, and I, I think about, uh, it, it's funny to me. I, I, I'm going to get on into the list, try to be a little funny. Uh, but I think about the, the rapper Plies. Uh, and, and he would always get on and he would say something was just so funny to me. And, uh, he would say, you mad, <laughs> you mad. And then he would go on and say, you big mad. And so, and so it's a lot of people, uh, who are big mad today. And I, I thought about it. I said, well, you look, I said, we had a 2.1 earthquake that rests on the Richter scale. 2.1. Now, if that ain't some mad, I don't know what mad is, but, but. That's all right. Uh, we're going to be joyful. We're going to be great. We're going to be thankful for this day. Everything that we've seen, the history that we've seen made uh, uh, from our first African-American Indian South Asian descent, Vice President, Madam Vice President, just so many wonderful things in Georgia. You got your first black senator, your Jewish senator. Uh, I'm, I'm uh, the first a uh, female black vice president swearing in the first black senator, Jewish senator uh, in the state of Georgia and the first Latino senator in the state of California. Just so much history made today. And so we ought to be thankful that God allowed us to be here and see it through all the, the, the vitriol and the, the hatred and all the things that are going on, death and sickness and uh, pandemics and uh, economy, all those things, God still allowed us to see something that we could be joyful about. And so I'm grateful that I was able to see it. And, and another thing, and I'm going on again, another thing that really uh, just touched my heart, did my heart good today is that, you know, we know uh, on the 6th, you know, two weeks ago, you had... Uh, the insurgency on the U.S. Capitol and, and, and you listen to all the people on TV uh, from national news correspondents and national media would talk about uh, the thing that really bothered them the most, which was to see the Confederate flag uh, carried uh, through the halls of the nation's capital. That really bothered them that they, that they, could, they would see that uh, and the world would see that. And what made me feel good today was, is that not that it was the fact that they would not have to talk about that they saw that uh, Confederate flag being carried through the nation's capital and how disgusting it was to them. 
but the then to have on the inauguration day that one of the 50 flags would be the state flag of Mississippi that would have that same Confederate emblem on the flag. But we didn't have to see that today. When we saw the Mississippi state flag, when we saw our flag, we saw the new flag. And it was just, so today was just a beautiful day. And so I'm grateful and I'm thankful for it. Amen. 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 So I'm going into the lesson so I can uh, leave you alone this evening. And so you know where we've been. We've been talking about sowing. We've been talking about reaping. Um, and, and today, uh, uh, last week I was in verse 9, Galatians, the sixth chapter. In verse 9, that's what I talked about last week, what Paul said, and let us not be weary in well doing, for in due season uh, we shall reap if we faint not. And we talked about how Paul, and I liked how he said, let us not be weary. And we talked about, excuse me, what being weary was is getting exhausted and and it's, it's wanting to uh, give up. It's wanting to throw in the towel. It's, you're doing everything you can. But Paul said, uh, let us, in other words, I'm in this with you. you. We're partners in this. I'm not just telling you something that I'm not doing. I understand what it is uh, to do good and to try to share gospel, the, the gospel and how to try to, to love on people and all those things, but you're steady being rejected. And he said it, 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 it would cause you to be disencouraged and make you want to just say, forget it. It's not even worth it. But Paul said, no, he said, let us, me and you brothers and sisters, let us not get weary in our way of doing. In other words, don't get tired of doing good. Continue to do good. He said, because in due season, you shall reap if you don't faint, if you don't quit. And you think about it, even to, to this, where we are today, you think about it. And I think about Stacey Abrams. Uh, and, I, and I think about uh, how she ran for the governor of the state of Georgia and how she lost the race and how she could have did like somebody else did was throw a temper tantrum and pout and, and, and make excuses and do all those things. But no, she knew she was doing a good work. And so she didn't get tired in doing the good work. And because she didn't, she put together a movement that would bring us to this day. And so... So just as the scripture says, if we don't get weary, if we continue on in doing good, whatever that good is, if it's good, it's good. It doesn't matter. If we just continue on in doing that good, we will reap benefits. And so the benefits of her continuing to do good, flip George. I'm telling you, me and my wife, I had to go. We had to run to on last Saturday, this past Saturday. We had to make a trip to uh, Atlanta to go see my son or daughter-in-law uh, and make a turnaround trip. But uh, as many times as, I've been, as I have been to Atlanta and driven to Atlanta and been around Atlanta, uh, this particular Saturday, I told my, my boy Lip, when I hit the state uh, line of Georgia and as I got closer into Atlanta, it just, it was such a, I felt so, such a vibe of, man, I'm, I'm, I'm in the state that made history. I'm, I'm in a place right now. And it just felt such a way. And so Stacey Abrams, because of what she did in the movement, not only her, but many people in, in the state of Georgia put together, particularly uh, in the Atlanta area. Now look where we are today. So from that today, we all are reaping the benefits of someone not getting weary and doing good. There, there's a picture that's floating around on the book face today. And if you've seen it, it's such a beautiful picture uh, of, of our new president and our new vice president uh, embracing one another. And, 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 and from the heavens, there's uh, 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 Senator John Lewis. There's Senator John McCain. There's, there's, there's uh, 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 Representative Elijah Cummins. There's a uh, uh, Justice uh, Ruth Ginsburg, and they're all just smiling. And so it's such a beautiful feeling of where we are today because of the good that the good work that was being done. All of those, uh, uh, John Lewis, McCain, uh, uh, Justice Ruth, and, 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 and Elijah Cummings, and many more. Uh, we just celebrated Dr. King's birthday and many more. All the good work that they have done. Now we 
are reaping the benefits of it. And if we continue to pray and continue to come together, then hopefully we'll continue to reap more benefits because there's so much more that needs to be done. And so that's what we talked about last week, verse nine. So this week, I want to drop down to verse 10. Remember, we're talking about first, we started out talking about the seed. Then we talked about the soil that the seed will go in. And, and last week and this week, we're trying to encourage the sower, the seed, the soil, and the sower. We, you and I, all have the ability to be sowers. God expects us to be sowers into his kingdom, into his ministry, into his works. All of us are sowers. And so for those who are sowing, it gets hard. It, it, it's, it's tough. Uh, it's, it's rigid. It's rough. You meet opposition. You slap down, but you're expected to get back up. And so Paul here is encouraging the, the, the Galatians, hey, don't get weary. Continue to sow good seeds. Continue to sow. This gospel is what Paul was talking about. Continue to sow the peace of the gospel, the joy of the gospel, the love. Continue to sow that. And if you don't faint, if you don't be disencouraged, if you don't uh, uh, let the rejection turn you around, then in due season, uh, remember, due means it's owed to you. You will reap what you have sown. So verse 10 says, now we're in verse 10, and verse 10 says, as we have, oh, before I go to 10, let me, uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, on verse 9, let me, on verse 9, I got to have scripture for verse 9, verse, and that scripture is going to be in 1 Corinthians uh, the 15th chapter, verse 58, I think. Yeah, 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Talking about the soul, encouraging the soul, encouraging him. And so Paul says here in, in 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, verse 58, he says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, he says, Be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding, in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain, vain is not in vain in the Lord. So Paul here again is encouraging the Corinthians, is he's encouraging us as believers to, as we are sowing, the sower must be steadfast. Steadfast means we must be strong. We're going to, opposition is going to come against us. But we must be strong. Uh, we must not be feeble and weak. And, 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 and if, again, we talked about it, if we are operating in our flesh, Jesus himself said, the spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. So if we are operating in our flesh rather than our spirit, we're going to get weak. And, 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 and so it behooves us to move in our spirit because what our spirit will do is energize and interject into our flesh, our physical man, when we want to quit, when we are even physically exhausted, the spirit will infuse us because it's not our spirit, it's the spirit of him that died on the cross. It's the spirit of him that rose from the grave. It's that spirit which will infuse us. Paul said it will quicken. He said, if the spirit of him dwells in you, if the spirit of you that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you, if that same spirit, if it lives within you, he said it will quicken your mortal body. In other words, the strength you think you didn't have, the, 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 the zeal, the drive to go on that you think you didn't have. If the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is in you, oh, it'll give you the energy. It'll give you what you need to get up and to go on. So Paul says, here, he says, we got to be steadfast. We got to be strong. And we are only strong in the Lord. Our strength is in the Lord. It's not in us. It's not in, in, in the material things. It's not in the temporal things. It's not in the people that we love. Our strength is in the Lord. Amen. The joy, matter of fact, the Bible says the joy of the Lord is my strength, my joy in God. What we see today, the joy that we feel, the joy that we have, that joy should be our strength to continue to sow. Because guess what? 
we're still going to have opposition. We are still in a pandemic. There's still going to be death. There's still going to be economic hardships. There's still going to be people that you're going to have to block or you're going to have to walk away from because they just don't want to line up or they just don't want to go in the direction that God has you in. Those things are still here. So our joy in the Lord, this, this joy that we have today is given to us by God. And we, if we reflect on that, then we have the strength to go on. When those days begin to get dark, we can remember the joy that the Lord gave me on this day and we can go forward. So Paul says, be ye steadfast. Then he says, be unmovable. <clears throat> unmovable means not changed in one's purpose or intentions. In other words, you must be intentional. Young brother sings this song, intentional. <clears throat> you, for the service of God, you have to be intentional. It cannot be about you. It cannot be what makes you feel good. It cannot be what your agenda is. You are intentional for God's agenda. You are specific. You are intentional. You are not changing because you are focused on God's agenda. Unmovable means not changed in one's purpose or intention. So what is your purpose? Your purpose is to edify God. Your purpose is to glorify God. Your purpose is to sow seeds in good ground that God is able to harvest for his pleasure, for his kingdom, for his benefit. Not mine, not yours, not ours, but for his. So we must be intentional in our sowing. We must be specific. I'm specifically sowing into this person's, this part of this person's life. I'm specifically intentionally sowing into this part of their ministry because I'm looking for something intentional to come out for God. He says we must be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Abounding means enthusiastically, always enthusiastic, always with fervor, always with zeal, not with your head down, not moaning, not groping, not complaining. Listen, look at what complaining gets you. It gets you to leave the capital because you can't even, I don't even want to go there. But, but we, Paul says we must be enthusiastic. We can't complain when things don't go right. We can't complain when things doesn't go our way. We must be intentional in what we are doing so that God can be glorified. So he says, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding. Always abounding in what? In the work of the Lord. Amen. So many of us are focused. We steadfast in the work of ourselves. What can I do to benefit me? What can I do to make my path easier? What can I do to make myself uh, more established, more sure-footed? Whatever it is. What can I do for me? But Paul says it must be for the Lord. And Jesus told us. He said, the first thing I'm telling you, if you're going to follow me, if you're going to do the work of the Lord, you got to be on the back burner. The first thing you got to do is deny yourself. You is not intentional for you. Your purpose now changes to Jesus, is to God's purpose. He says, so if you're going to do the work of the Lord, you got to deny you. Again, we are our biggest threats. We are our biggest obstacles. We are our biggest challenges. We are to ourselves. So many times we're talking about what somebody else has done to me or what somebody else said about me or how somebody else is looking at me. But the fact of the matter is we are our biggest challenge. We are. Amen. So... I want to give you that scripture uh, on verse nine. Uh, uh, amen. Then I want to, there's one more. Because uh, we're talking about ministry. We're talking about sowing. We're talking about well-doing for God. And so uh, 2 Corinthians 
4 and 1 says, Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. Paul, again, encouraging. We have. I, I love this. He's not saying you. He's not telling. He, Paul was not just charging them. This is your charge. This is what you to do. Paul is saying, I'm a laborer with you. Paul saying, I'm a sower with you. And so since we have this ministry of sowing, he said, since we have this ministry of service, we have it because we have received mercy. I love this scripture because the reason we are able to sow, the reason we are even here is because of God's mercy. He was merciful to us. So many people did not see this day, wanted to see this day, but he was merciful to us. Not that we were any better or we were more right or we were more righteous than they were. But no, because of his mercy, he allowed us to see this day. And because of his mercy, since we received it, we can't faint. We cannot quit on God. A lot of people, when they walk away from the work of God, when they walk away from the field, the labor that God, the, the, the orchard, the vineyard that God has put them in to work and to till and to labor, they think when they walk away, they're walking away uh, uh, from themselves. No, you're walking away from God. God put you there. God told you to labor there. God told you to work there. And when you walk away, you turning your back and walking away from God. And shame on us. All of us going to get a hard time in the field. We're laboring in. There's always going to be obstacles. There's always going to be opposition because there's always, uh, as I said, when you have a, a plane, a height of joy, you got an equal height and plane of anger. So, so you must be prepared for that. And that's what yeah, I didn't finish the scripture. That's why Jesus said, you got to deny yourself. And then he said, you got to take up your cross and you got to follow him. Taking up your cross is the hatred, is the anger, is the vitriol, is the jealousy, is all the things you're going to get when you're laboring in your field. But you cannot walk away from your labor because if you walk away from where God has put you to labor, you're walking away and turning your back on God. And you're going to have to answer to God for that. Amen. Amen. All right. Verse 10. I'm sorry, y'all. I said we ain't got that much time. Y'all know how I do. I'm sorry. I just, I like to, I talk, I stay in stuff a long time because I just like to get as much as I can out of it. So, so verse 10 says, uh, Galatians 6 and 10 says, uh, as we have therefore opportunity, so you're talking about the soul, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. So Paul is saying, here in this 10th verse of Galatians, he said, as we again, we, Paul saying, my brothers, my sisters, we are laboring together as we therefore have opportunity. This is what I love. Look, uh, uh, the, the definition for opportunity, this is the definition for opportunity. The definition for opportunity says uh, that it is a set of circumstances that makes it possible to do something. Opportunity is a set of circumstances that makes it possible to do something. Now, what is the something we're talking about? Uh, here in particular in this text, the something we're talking about doing is good. <laughs> Amen. We are required and expected and charged by Paul from God to do good as we therefore have opportunity. So it's a circumstance that makes it possible to do something. Also, it is a situation, another definition, a situation or condition favorable for attainment of a goal. Opportunity is a situation or condition favorable, means it's favorable, it's possible, for attainment of a goal. So what is your goal? What is our goal? Our goal and what we're talking about and what we've been talking about is sowing good seeds so we can reap a good harvest. And that good harvest is a harvest for the Lord. So I, I love it. 
He says, as we therefore have opportunity. I see that's my time. I'm going to get ready to cut off. I'm going to say this. I know you keep telling me to go. I just have to stay doing my time. Uh, I, I love, we, we think about all that has happened today and, and what the, uh, the, uh, the mandate and, and our, our president, what his mandate, his, his, his man, build back better, but his, his mandate, his, his, his direction, his, his, his orders were that he wanted to unify the country. He's even in his speech today and all the speeches that we hear, and we've been talking about it since, especially since the sixth of this month, because uh, the insurrection that happened at the nation's capital and, 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 and then how everybody want to quickly brush that insurrection under the rug and say, well, we need to unify. We need to come together as a country because what we didn't want or what they didn't want to do was accept accountability for what had happened. But in order, I think the president said today, in order to heal, you have to remember. So in order to heal, you have to remember. And when you remember, you, you make an account of it and you, you take account of it. If it's something that you have done, you take responsibility of it and you atone for it, then you heal and move forward. That's why so many people right now are hurt, angry, whatever it is, cannot move forward because they have not had accountability for something in their past. And so that's what people were saying. Yes, we, we've been talking about we need to come together. The country is divided. We are divided. But until we have accountability, it's going to be hard to unify. And so, and again today, our president said, my mandate is to unify this great divide. There is a great divide in this country. There is a great divide in politics. We are so divided. But still, his hope is that we unify. There be unity. So isn't it, just, it just so happened, as I look into what I'm talking about today, as I look at verse 10 here in Galatians, the sixth chapter, and I look at what I'm talking about, I say, as we therefore have opportunity, as I look at the word opportunity, when I look at this word opportunity, the last five letters in this word of opportunity is unity. When I look, Paul says, as we therefore have opportunity, the last Five letters in the word opportunity is unity. So in other words, it is a chance. It is what I said it was earlier. It is a circumstance for us to do something, for us to attain a goal. And if the goal is unity, it's a mandate from our president, should be the mandate of us as Christians to live together. And you, the Bible says how good and pleasant it is for brother and to dwell together in unity. That's God's mandate as well, that we be unified. And so Paul says, as we therefore have opportunity, let us do good. There is an opportunity. In other words, there's an opportunity for unity. The question is, will we take the opportunity for unity. That's a personal question. That's a question for everyone who's in our nation's capital. That's a question for everyone who took their oath of office today. That's a question for everyone who's in a position of authority. That's a question for us as not only leaders, but us as followers. Will we take the opportunity for unity? Paul says, as we therefore have opportunity, as we therefore, as we have therefore opportunity. In other words, you have an opportunity. If you don't think you have anything else, know you have an opportunity. One reason why you know you have, and first of all, he says, let us, if we have an opportunity, let us do good. There's always an opportunity to do good. Why? Because there's always going to be some evil. There's always going to be some bad. But Paul says, and our president and our father in heaven says, we should be unified. How? Think about it. 
if we're asking for unity, we are Christians, we preach unity, whatever it is, isn't it better? Or am, aren't I more effective if you see me living unity versus just speaking unity? Anybody who sells a product or whatever it is, don't you get more out of your sale from your demonstration more so than just your presentation? Doesn't it, when you just physically see something, or you, because that's how we are, I got to touch it. We Thomas, I, I got to stick my finger there. So, am, aren't I more effective if I live unity, if I try to get along with brothers and sisters versus just standing up here telling you to be, we need to come together, we need to be unified, but my total actions and everything I do is a total opposite. Like them hypocrites on Martin Luther King's birthday, we, we observed it on, on Monday. Like all those Ted, the Ted Cruz's and the Marco Rubio's and, and countless of other hypocrites who would get up and quote Dr. King's speeches and quotes, which Dr. King called for unity and so many other things, and they would quote it knowing they are doing the total opposite. Who's, that's not selling. Or rather, I say the proper people are not buying that because Dr. King lived. He demonstrated. John Lewis demonstrated. John McCain, so many others, they demonstrated what they were offering. And so it behooves us. That's my time. I'm going to go. I'll pick up next week. Lord, say the same. But Paul said, and this is our thing. He said, as we therefore have opportunity. So we have an opportunity. We'll pick up there next week and we want to talk about an opportunity. Unity is an opportunity. So we got to take advantage of our opportunities, my brothers and sisters. In sowing, in doing good, in forgiving, you got to take an op. You got to take uh, advantage of the opportunity that has been presented before us. And so, we got a long road ahead of us as a nation, as a country, as a people. But but it's an opportunity. So are we gonna take it or not? Amen. Amen. God bless you. That's our lesson for tonight. And so, uh, we're gonna sign off with a word of prayer. Uh, Father God, again, in your son Jesus' name, Lord, we thank you for another Bible study. We thank you, Father, for this day. We thank you for everything that has transpired on this day, uh, especially what our eyes have seen, what our ears have heard, what our hearts have felt. We thank you, Father, for a new direction. We pray, Father, right now. We ask uh, that uh, the people who have been uh, sworn in, who are the new leaders of the free world, we pray, Father, that they would consult with you, uh, that you would lead them and guide them. Uh, and what's best for all of your people, not just one political party, not just one race of people, not just one gender, uh, not just one creed, one class, but what's best for all of your people. Father, we thank you, Lord, uh, for your son, Jesus Christ. Uh, we thank you so much for his sacrifice, as always. Uh, we thank you for his shed blood. Uh, we thank you for his resurrected spirit. Uh, we just pray, Father, right now, Lord, that you will bless us, your people. So many people, Lord, still are hungry. So many people are still sick, uh, battling this COVID. We pray for them. We pray for the caregivers. Pray for the first responders, frontline workers. Uh, pray for the military. We, we just pray for everyone, Lord, all of your people. Uh, we pray right here uh, locally, Father, for uh, our members. We pray for uh, the Marshall family. We pray for the Thompson family. Uh, we pray for uh, so many people, Father. You know uh, who they are. We pray for uh, all of your churches, all of your establishments. Uh, Lord, just, just be with your people, Lord. We just we need you, Father. We, we realize uh, that we cannot do anything without you, Lord. And so uh, we're just so grateful and so thankful uh, for another opportunity uh, to study your word, uh, to try to uh, get instructions, to try to live up uh, to be better, uh, representatives uh, to be better demonstrators of your word, Lord. So we just ask that you will go with us uh, throughout the rest of this week. Uh, be with your people. Heal those who need healing. Feed those who are hungry. 
Uh, just be to your people what they need you to be. We thank you. We love you. We ask this in your son Jesus' name. Amen.